Now we want to look at the processes of adding and multiplying two functions. Let's start with a function y equals g of x represented by the black line and y equals f of x by the green line. If we want to add these functions, that means at every value, at, uh, every point on the x-axis, we add whatever the uh, y value is for the g of x function to the y value of the f of x function, or vice versa. Doesn't matter in which order we add these, obviously. So let's say x1 is a point here. Then f of x1 is going to be represented by the length of this arrow, and uh, g of x1 is going to be represented by the length of this arrow, so that when we add the two, we'll add the g of x arrow on top of the f of x arrow here. We'll just take this arrow and shift it up here, and we'll get the total of f of x plus g of x. We do the same thing at this point, adding the uh, f of x value to the g of x value by moving the arrow up here and at every other point. Now, when we get uh, here, the f of x and g of x values appear to be the same, so we just add an arrow of the same length. We really have two arrows, one on top of the other here. And when we get over here, we actually end up adding the g of x on top of the f of x. We're going to add the lower one on top of the higher one just to keep track of how the graphs go. But we're going to get a graph that looks something like this. Now, when we multiply two graphs, or two functions by their graphs, uh, we have to multiply the values, obviously. Now, just for a couple of functions, just to give some meaning to this situation, uh, you don't even have to pay much attention to the meaning, but uh, I'm going to discuss this with meaning. If uh, V0x is the velocity of the ball coming off of the sloped ramp of length L, with one end raised to height h, uh, then you recall maybe the function v0x equals v0 times the square root of l squared minus h squared over l. The v0 function is how fast the ramp, or the, the uh, ball is moving. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to represent this function as a product of the v0 function and a square root of l squared minus h squared over l function. Okay. When we begin elevating the ramp, the velocity of the ball increases with elevation fairly quickly. As we get up to the higher and higher elevations, closer and closer to 90 degrees, the, ball, uh, the, the speed of the ball kind of levels off like this. Because the closer we are to vertical, the closer we get to the uh, straight drop velocity. And uh, just accept that the V-naught graph is like this. We don't want to go deeply into the physics of the situation, but we do have this graph that represents v-naught as a function of h. The square root of l squared minus h squared over l squared, um, if l is, uh, I'm sorry, if h is 0, then we just get l over l, and that's 1. When h is equal to l, we get a numerator of 0 here, so this l squared minus h squared over l function, square root of l squared minus h squared over l, will be 0, because we have 0 over L. And this function decreases from 1 to 0. Uh, the graph doesn't really look exactly the way I drew it. It stays pretty horizontal here for a while, and then really drops off fairly rapidly, becoming almost vertical as we approach this point. Matter of fact, the limiting slope here will be infinite as we approach this point. But we'll use this as an illustration anyhow. Now, if we multiply v naught values by the square root of L squared minus A squared over L values, we're going to multiply the altitude of this graph by the altitude of this graph. When the altitude of this graph is 1, which it is here, then we're going to be multiplying v0 by something that's very close to 1. So that the values will be very close to v0. Now, the values in this graph are a little bit less than 1, and they get less and less, so that we're going to fall a little bit below the V0 graph, and then more and more so. By the time we get out to, say, this point, this H value, uh, the way I've got it drawn at least, this function is down to about maybe half of its original value of 1. So that we're going to have about half of V0 when we multiply V0 by the value of this function. That's going to give us a point right about here. Then as we approach h equals l, this function approaches 0, so that the product of these two functions, since this one approaches 0, is going to approach 0. And we're going to get a graph something like this.
as we saw, there's a point in between uh, the zero range that we get here, or the zero velocity that we get here, and the uh, zero x velocity that we get here, where the x velocity is a maximum. If we drop the ball straight down, have the ramp vertical, the x velocity is going to be zero, obviously. And if we don't have any altitude to get the ball moving on the ramp, the x velocity will certainly be zero. And in between, there's a place where the x velocity is a maximum.